guys I'm showing you how I make my PCBs using dip trace as you can see this is a screen grab using bandicam so this is a sample schematic so here is the AT27C 256R EEPROM and the Game Boy Edge connector so I got the Game Boy Edge connector online so this is a dip trace file and in order to create a PCB you just need to click file and convert to PCB the dip trace will check if there are connections that need to be removed so in this case it's WE or write enable it's not connected to the EEPROM because the EEPROM cannot be written electronically so here's what it will look like after you convert to PCB so fortunately the edge connector has the borders of the PCB already laid out the blue lines you see are called rat lines they are uh, they indicate the connection between the component or the EEPROM and the edge connector So you can set the markings of the components. Here I'm showing the value of the, or the name rather, of the EEPROM displayed at the center. So when the PCB is manufactured, that will show up as a silk screen print. And here I'm modifying the, the pads because they're, they're a bit small I'm making them longer whoops that must be a link for another website please ignore that so I'm just setting the width to 1.25 and the height to 2 they're much better it would be much easier to solder on a thicker pad I will be soldering this by hand let me just hide some of the names so there you have the um, the EEPROM as it sits on the board or the PCB of a Game Boy cartridge So now we will we need to set the um, we first need to set the PCB layout. Let's see where was that? The PCB layout button there border. So the border outline will indicate the size and shape of the PCB. So what I'm doing here is I'm just tracing around the outline of the uh, edge connector which conveniently already has the outline of the, the outline of the size and shape of the PCB. So this is going to take a while so usually uh, each point of the board or each corner can be edited to exact values but here I'm just tracing the board outline conveniently provided together with the edge connector component so that I don't have to input the values manually As you can see the 
Game Boy PCB has an odd shape. It has a cutout on the upper corner. And that is because in the original Game Boy DMG, that is where the switch, the power switch slides onto so that you don't accidentally eject or pull the cartridge out while the unit is still on. That feature wasn't implemented on any other versions of the Game Boy after the original Game Boy DMG. Alright, we're down to the last point on the board. So on the last one, instead of clicking onto it, you have to hit enter. hit enter and then there it is the purple outline will now be the PCB now for the traces you can auto or auto route the, the traces the trace will do the tracing by itself so you have to set the trace width in this case it's 0.25 millimeters and the trace clearance or the clearance between traces so you just click auto route and that's it your PCB is done uh, well it's not aesthetically pleasing it's, it's not that bad having only one component on the board on a double-sided PCB we need to check if there are errors and there are a few but you can ignore that because that's just the edge connector too close to the edge of the PCB so this is what this, the PCB should look like after it's been manufactured so right down here it's not quite pleasing it will work for the purpose that it will work I mean the traces are solid I'm sure and I've for my prototype boards, I've had uh, I've had these boards manufactured with auto auto route, so I did not manually route the traces, and they worked fine. But uh, if you happen to go the manual route, I mean you can change the route manually. So I will show you something I did a while back, which is based on the same schematics. So we will not save this one, but I will open something that I did manually. So this is a manual route um, PCB. So I routed all the traces manually. As you can see, it, this is the back of the board the bottom of the board rather so it's much more pleasing uh, at least for me the design I think is much better looking so this is what it looks like after it's manufactured and the EEPROM has been installed so this is how the board should look like now I took the liberty of putting on um, silk screen markings so that's the one I took a card for GB both front and back put the name of the or the part number of the EEPROM which is 27C256 right so there you have it uh, my manufacturer of choice is of course JLCPCB uh, here you can use the manual route to put on the traces yourself so you ha just have to connect you know pass it wherever you want as long as it's within the boundaries of the PCB so there you have it based on this schematic you can produce the PCB